Hey everybody, my name is Nick. I'm an independent filmmaker. This is Oscar, he's my first AD. I'm in the process of filming my first full-length feature. I've never done anything quite of this size and scope, and so I'm making this video series to document the process as I go through it, as I go from step one to step two and just sort of share everything publicly as a way to organize my own thoughts and kind of understand the process a little better for myself, but hopefully some of you can get something out of this as well. Today, we're talking about screenplay. It's sort of step one in the entire filmmaking process, probably the most foundational of anything else. If you don't have a good script, you don't have a good movie. And so I've been thinking a lot about this over the past six months or so, doing you know rough drafts, revisions, printing things out, redlining, crossing out, starting over, all of it. And so I wanna just take you through a little bit of this script, how it came to be. I suppose the first thing is the format. Screenplays are all written sort of like this, in this 12-point courier format with margins that look like this. Character names are always in all caps. There's sort of this routine that you see them all in. What's useful about it are a couple of things. First, is that you can hand a screenplay to anyone in the business if they've had experience and they'll really easily be able to digest it and sort of understand what it is. Second, and just as importantly, one finished page of screenplay translates roughly to one minute of finished film. So if you have 90 pages of script, you got about 90 minutes of film and so on. How you get this formatting, how you actually write a document that will end up looking like this, um, is something you can do in a number of different ways. There's free software online you can get, there's good paid software, the industry standard is Final Cut. I just went into Microsoft Word and took a little bit of time formatting some styles, making things work automatically the way I wanted to, and at the end of the day, I do have a screenplay that reads and looks like any other screenplay you'd see. So. I'm making that available as well if you want to poke around with it for yourself. There's a link in the description. It's a free Word doc. It's got all the metadata stripped, so you're welcome to use it however you like. There's a little bit of instructions within the document about how it works, but uh, basically, you know, as you're writing a screenplay, it's sort of this interesting blend between what you see on screen and a book. So there's a little bit of descriptive information, but you want all of that to eventually translate to the screen. Anything that the characters are saying is something obviously that will be audible in the film, but everything else should be written as to convey your story in the ultimate medium that it's going to be presented in. You don't want a lot of stuff about, Jack thought to himself, I wonder where I should go today, you know, or Jack felt hungry. You don't want that. You want, Jack rubs his stomach and we hear a low grumble. You know, something like that, uh, so that the idea is conveyed visually. As I was thinking about tackling this project, knowing that I wanted to produce a movie, a full-length feature drama, I had to think about what kind of story I could tell. I love Star Wars as much as the next guy, but I don't have the budget to put together something like that, and I don't have the visual effects expertise to be able to sort of bootstrap it myself. Something like, you know, Kung Fury, where a few guys with a lot of skills and a little bit of money put together something really cool. If you haven't seen that, definitely take a look at it. So for me, I thought, okay, what is a story I could tell that will be interesting, have an element of fantasy that I kind of like, but also be feasible to shoot on a shoestring budget. And so I came up with this story about a guy uh, who's dealing with mental health issues. That's something that's really near and dear to my heart, um, but sort of finds his way into a world of broader possibilities and how that links in with his own journey of mental health. And I figured, okay, I've got sort of three general locations for this film. There's a first 10 pages of it are sort of in this guy's apartment. And then the next sort of half of the film is him in a psychiatric hospital. And then the final half of the film 
is in Las Vegas. That's sort of how I thought about the structure first, is what's my budget, what are my constraints, what kind of story can I tell, and then go from there. And similarly, the characters in the story are crafted around those same concerns. So, you know, a movie like Avengers Endgame, we have, you know, 50 named characters, probably. And uh, all of them are played by very famous actors. And it's a, it's a bonanza. You know, it was one of the biggest, coolest movies of all time. And that's not the kind of story that I can tell. So... I crafted a story where there are just a few main characters. I think the total number of named characters in the script is something like 10, and most of them only have a line or two. Our core cast of characters is really four people, basically. Uh, there's the main character, who's in just about every scene. He's very much the point of view character as well. And then three other people who sort of come in and out in various ways throughout the story. So then it was sort of fleshing out the story from A to Z. I had my general conceit. I knew the arc. I wanted him to go from here to here to here. And it was a matter of connecting those dots. Basically, I just started writing. It took a while. Sometimes I'd come up with a logistical problem. You know, character A needs to go to location B, but he needs to encounter problem C in the middle. How do we connect all those things? And for me, often it was going for a run or ha falling asleep at night and waking up with the answer that would solve those. Everybody has their own process of how to do that. Eventually you get your finished product. So this is now 21,000 words, 97 pages or so, um, and it's something I'm really happy with. I read it for my wife, who tends not to have anything negative to say, but that alone is helpful. So just reading your script, just reading your script, no matter who it's to, even if it's just to yourself, but going through the entire thing can be really, really helpful. And there's a couple of pieces of equipment that I found really important in the process. One is just this three ring binder. You know, these are two or three dollars and they're very nice because it makes your product portable and safe. Next up, a nice good three hole punch. It's handy, it's got a little flap for dropping the excess. And then maybe my favorite piece of reading writing equipment, flags. So flags in combination with a pen, pencil, or orange highlighter and they must be orange because every other color is worthless in highlighting. Flags plus an orange highlighter or another writing implement can be super helpful. So I went through this script a couple of nights ago, read through it, and every time you find a typo, you can just flag it. And of course you can do this on the computer as well, but often when we're on a computer, we're just scrolling mindlessly, or we might say, ah, oh, these three pages are fine. But if you have to physically turn through them, you might be more likely to actually read them. Or at least for some of us, I think for most of us, the tactile nature of actually going through a physical document helps embed it in your brain a little bit better, absorb it a little bit better. I don't know. Anyway, I find the flags to be super helpful. I will use them and peel them off and reuse them. And what else can I tell you about the screenplay process? I found it to be a ton of fun. I loved writing this. I love that now I have this finished product and it basically has all the information that anyone will need to help me get through this project. I probably put in more camera direction and technical information than maybe your average screenplay would have. When you're writing this, you wanna consider who's gonna be using it. So if you're handing this off to a different director and different director of photography, they'll want there to be lots of flexibility for them as artists to imprint their own unique signature on it. For me, since I am going to be doing the directing of the film and do the direction of photography, I put a good chunk of the things that I want in there. For example, a number of scenes have match cuts because in some cases I wanted things to feel a certain way to convey a very specific message. And that's all fine because I'm the screenwriter and the director and the director of photography. But 
if I wasn't all of those things, I might change it a little bit to leave room for those other people to make their mark on the film. I don't know what else to say. This was a ton of fun. Uh, again, the, the template that I used to write this is in the link in the description below. If you got any questions about my process or what's next, please leave a comment below. Next time, I'll probably delve into a bunch of pre-production stuff. So that's gonna be it for now. I don't think Oscar has anything else left to say, but uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.